Hello, I'm Poor Cynic with Tavern Tired Reviews, and this is Pocket Planes. If you read the review, which I hope you have, you'll know that my review of this game was pretty positive. It certainly blows away its uh, uh, tiny tower, which is made by the same company. I mean, there is a vast gulf of difference between the two games. Um, this game is actually good, instead of just mediocre. Um, there isn't a main screen, except unless you count the menu. Uh, we'll start there, just go over the basic things. Stats, that shows your stats. The stats of your airline, uh, how many, the, like, the amount of airports you have, uh, the basic revenue you make, flights and passengers and cargo. As you can see, I haven't played in a while. The, the big zero flat line there. All right, next. Events. That just shows uh, what's going on. The various random things that will occur. Positive things will result in uh, basically more opportunities to get bucks, more opportunities to earn money. Negative events like fog here, you can see for Tbilisi. That'll close down an airport, that'll prevent things from, uh, it'll prevent you from flying in or out. Fogs and tropical storms and thunderstorms. Uh, let me see. Bank. It's where you exchange co uh, bucks for coins. Not really tremendously economical considering how important bucks are. Uh, really wish there was a way just to go back to the menu. I have not found it yet. You actually have to go back to the plain screen and then back into the menu, which is a little annoying. Airpedia, that shows all the planes and vehicles there are to get. And you can see it's not all planes. There's a hot air balloon. Or there are different kinds of planes. as in a P-40 Warhawk. Um... Yeah, you know, starships and Kringles, uh, Santa sleigh and a blimp and and top of the line passenger craft and big old jumbo jets, and you can sort them based on uh, the type of aircraft, the airport they can land at, their radius, their travel distance, their weight. All of that plays into uh, how efficient they are at uh, doing their jobs, at earning you money traveling and whatnot. Logs, this is tracking the planes you have, uh, the amount of time they've flown, uh, the amount of profit they make per hour. Very nice profit on those bottom planes. Uh, the market, that's where you can get new parts of planes you exchange for bucks. Uh, you can also unlock parts of planes by buying new airports, so this is not the only way to get it. As you can see, they sell parts and they sell full planes. There are three parts that make up a plane. There's an engine, there's controls, and then there's a fuselage, uh, the body. You see the navigator P body. Um, and better aircraft obviously will cost more bucks. A flight crew, this is a, uh, the online uh, play method, basically. Uh, if you use the same crew member, uh, crew name as someone else, it will basically put you on a global ranking and it'll be, you know, it's a way to compare your scores, but there's no actual head-to-head -head type of stuff. Get bucks, that's pretty obvious. It's the in-game store. I'm not going to go much into that. Hangar. This is where you put planes that you are not using, and you can break them down for scrap, or you can fly them. Like I'm going to scrap this one; it costs two bucks, or I guess it didn't cost two bucks. But 
all the parts will have gone here, and then you can sell those uh, for cash. Or you can gift them to a friend. I guess the bucks on the, uh, the previous screen was for... Um, uh, my head's not in the, my head's not in the game. Focus, man, focus. The bucks were for if you wanted to put it back into service. You have to pay that much. Okay, going back down scores that obviously connects you to Game Center awards, also Game Center. It's for achievements, settings, disabling notifications, D disabling devices notification center. I actually tried to do that. There was not an option to do that, so that's another problem. Here, you can only change whether it's first and last landing. Um, but yeah, I went to Device Notification Center, all it has was credits. Uh, you can reset the wards you run, you can set the entire game. You turn off sounds, turn off iCloud. Uh, BitBook, that's just, you know, a little in-game entertainment thing, see what the passengers are saying about your plane and all the things you've shipped is use quite punny things the in-flight movie on my trip last week was revenge of the slippers it was good i think that was a reference to when i shipped slippers or something you ship weird things. And games is just other games by the same developer. So, back to the plain screen. Uh, man. Okay. First off, at the top, the name of the airport, Calgary. There is a... You can see the identification number of the plane. The 0 out of 4C, that's the amount of cargo this particular plane can carry. As you can see, other plane is car one zero one cargo zero one person. Jobs less than one minute. It's the amount of time before new jobs unlock. I don't know what the little zero out of five L next to the t name of the airport means. I can't haven't really figured that out. I maybe it's layovers. Yeah, it's probably it's layovers. You know, yeah, just use your brain, poor cynic. Use your brain. Okay, uh, down near the bottom, you can see uh, the first button is for loading the plane with cargo and passengers, which I'll do in just a second. Uh, button next to that, that's the airport information. Uh, airport information. Uh, it just shows like the population of the airport city, uh, airport size, layovers, f the amount of flights you've had, the amount of passengers, and the amount of shipments. Uh, info, that's just a little trivia about the about the city in which your airport is set close closes the airport uh airport upgrade airport upgrades uh allow you for sort of better more uh brain has shut down sorry oh man <laughs> okay focus focus man focus um, yeah, it, it gets you passengers that pay more, it gets you cargo that pays more. And advertise, but you spend some money and it does the same thing. But it only lasts for a temporary amount of time, I think. It's been a while since I've played this game. I'm a little... Yeah, advertise trial for eight hours a month, you said to increase demand for about half my money. No, we won't do that. Because it's a little piss at the airport. Uh, but next to that, it's information about the specific plane. You can look at all the stats. You can change the costume of the pilot. It's all random unless you buy one for bucks. Uh, this isn't so bad considering you have so many bucks. Uh, I mean, yeah, you pick these up pr pretty quickly. Yeah, I suppose it just doesn't really add anything concrete. It's just for laughs, you know. You know, the plane flown by a ghost. Ooh. Um, then at the bottom, you have the amount of coins you have, which is the conventional currency, the amount of bucks you have, which is the super currency, your level, which is your level, 
Uh, then the next button, that shows all your planes. Mine are currently idle. You can add a plane slot, or you can buy a new plane slot, which allows you to have another plane in the air. Next to that is the map button. This, uh, you can buy cities through here. It shows you where your planes are with a little number next to the city. And yes, that's how that works. So let's get these folks in the air. All right, as you can see, we have basically shown off the different types of cargo. Uh, you'll ha have um, most everything you get coin payment for. Occasionally, as you can see at the top, you get bucks payment for. Uh, that is the trade-off of you get bucks, but it costs you coins because there's a basic cost of flight. Let's see. And you'll earn more. You, you see the little plus 25% bonus if it's both go if it's going everything goes to the same place. Everything goes to Adelaide and I make a, a fair profit. Next plane. This is a slightly larger one. And we are in Sydney. Uh, yeah, that seems pretty good. Yeah, otherwise I'd be going in the complete opposite direction of the cargo, which you can do, but it's not exactly economical. Where? I'm losing my mind. Oh, right. This is a higher class of plane, and it can only land in specific higher class city or you can land only at specific higher class airports so like you can see melbourne is lit up so i could land at melbourne i could land at jakarta or singapore you see they have different colors in the in the in the city circle as well but i can't land at somewhere like alice springs or rockhampton so with that in mind let's reload the plane So yeah, for something like this, for a plane like this, you have to pay attention to the color of the circles next to the name, in which case there's only one uh, passenger I can really take that's going to Melbourne. That would be a waste of money. That would, I'll show you here. No, I make a tiny profit off it. It's not really that great of a deal, but yeah, it'd just be better to wait for the, the, for the next jobs to shuttle in. And yeah, you undo a flight plan just by hitting the red go back button. And you can zoom in and out with the plus and minus buttons. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Next plane. Yeah, I should have known that because I put it in the code. Uh, you can see this is MC-105. This can, can land at level 1 airports. This is MC-204, which means it can land at only 2 and above airports. So that was, you know, a brain fart on my behalf, and I apologize. It's late, and I am tired. Well, it's not exactly late. I'm just tired. And rambling. Uh, Singapore, Brisbane, and Kuching. Brisbane's on the other side of the continent. It would help if I knew anything about ge uh, geography and whatnot. Uh, I think Geraldton's on the way. Yeah, Geraldton's right there. Kuching and Singapore. And that gets me a 301 coin profit. Not spectacular, but uh, okay. And, yeah, nice profit getting to Melbourne. Of course, this is a plane with not a lot of uh, range. Hang on. I think I could do that better. Yeah, that's... that's uh, actually, there is a... I forgot to mention, but you can change... Uh, in the plane option, the plane option button, the, the plane with the uh, magnifying glass above it, you can change the paint scheme of the plane. You can upgrade the plane, which um, 
you can increase the range, you can increase the speed, and you can decrease the weight, and that all uh, basically results in more profitable planes, or you can remove it from service. All right, good. I can get uh, get some profit by going to Jakarta. And nice chunk of change there. Uh, let's see. Port Headland and uh, Palau. Let's go to Palau. There's, no, as you can see, there's no, or as you can hear, there's no music, but there is sort of appropriate sound effects, planes taking off, and little boo noise, and, oh yeah, as you can see, uh, there was a coin flying across the screen there, and this is one of the ways this game is better than um, Tiny Tower, at least for me, is that it gives you something to do that is obviously profitable, instead of just, um, operating the elevators which I found to be tedious whereas this is just sort of a you know oh catch it before it flies off screen type of thing and it is at least slightly more interesting you don't have to do it. you can just you know turn off the game and wait um, no good combos in Singapore so let's go to here. New Zealand's nice. Hopefully, I can get there in this plane. Carnes, Brisbane. Ah, oh, I can just make it. Take the scuba men. All right. Not a lot of selection in Auckland at the moment. I'm about to get new jobs, though, so that might change. Uh, I'll check back in just a second, because, you know, I'm going to get new jobs. Aha! This gets me two bucks. Broken Hill Secret Brews. See, oh, whoops. Uh, Carnes is getting scuba gear. I think they had, a, like, a scuba diving convention. Uh, wow, a lot of bucks opportunities. You see I got new jobs, but because I'm in the job screen, it hasn't cycled them out yet. But there's so much to choose from here. I don't want to cycle it out. So let's go Alice Springs and Mount Isa. <clears throat> and... Fair amount of profit, but I'm also going to get the two bucks, which is always a plus. Let's see if I got anything new. I did. Singapore, Jakarta, Catherine, and Port Moresby. Flight path of the drunk here. I am not, I would not be good at running an actual airline, as you can tell. <coughs> Excuse me. I just put them on the plane and send them in the rough letter right direction. Oh, there's not a fourth Alice Springs. Darn. Thought I was going to make a nice bonus there. Guess you'll have to go to Darwin instead. I think. Oh, yeah, I've got one more on the ground. But as you can see, uh, this shows their ETA. Um, and the further you go along, the further you get along in the game, obviously the, uh, the time for arrival is going to increase. Like when I was just starting out with a handful of cities, it was about 10, 15, even less minutes, like five. Now I'm, I'm over an hour because I'm going from Singapore to... Uh, you know, to New Zealand. And I, you have to figure, it's going to be obviously going to be even longer when I'm getting into Asia and Europe and North America. All right. Um, okay, I got... Oh, ran out of... I forgot. Who do I already have on board? Oh, right, yeah. This is the one that uh, 
can only take the the lar only land at larger cities. Darn. So I can go to Melbourne and I can go to Singapore. Wow, that that sucks. That's not good. So uh, no, you're not gonna fly anywhere. You're gonna keep sitting on the tarmac, waiting for. Uh, well, I let's see if there's anything in Melbourne that would make the if there's anybody waiting there. Um, it looks like there's one for Jakarta. I see uh, MC-102 has arrived in Adelaide. All right. Um, oops. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll keep on that for Singapore, and we'll head to Melbourne and pick up that other passenger. But let's go to the plane that just landed. Yeah. Oh, Broken Hill. It's not the greatest profit, but I get a buck. Or bucks. And sometimes you have to take those smaller flights. Um, you can hurry them up with by, by paying bucks, as you can see here at the bottom. Uh, obviously, it's going to cost more depending on how long the flight's going to be. 48 minutes, that's four bucks. An hour and three minutes, that's 10 bucks. But, uh, let me look at it. They blocked BitTube access on the in flight Wi Fi. What am I supposed to do for 37 minutes? Well, you should have put, you know, like, podcasts on your iPod or something. If I weren't so tired, I'd be funnier, I swear. But yeah, that's the game. Uh, that's that's Pocket Planes. Uh, don't be fooled by my uh, lackluster delivery of that, my, my being completely out of it. This is a really entertaining game, you know, if you like uh, plane simulations and, and whatnot. Um, I think it's very solid. It's definitely an improvement over, the, uh, over t something like Tiny Tower. And uh, it's freemium, which is a an issue obviously but you earn so you can earn bucks so easily bucks being the super currency i mean that you'll never really have to pay anything it's it's a good system um so yeah uh pick up this game whenever you can if it seems like something you'd be interested in i'm poor cynic with tam and tyron reviews tata -ta and farewell i'm going to bed Stay tuned for future reviews at tablettyrant.blogspot.com. That's tablettyrant.blogspot.com. Or subscribe to this YouTube channel.